Welcome to week three of online learning. I hope you're doing okay. I recognize the challenges that some of you are facing, all of us are facing really at home, you know, trying to do the learning, accessing technology, all those things. And I really appreciate your efforts. Um, I'll just let you know, you know, learning or teaching, <laughs> teaching from home isn't the easiest either, right? You know, I don't have access to all of my technology that I usually use, you know, having to change lessons a little bit. There's always challenges or <laughs> like interruptions around home. Hey there, Ryan, how are you doing? Good. Good, what are you working on? Mm. Calculus homework. Your calculus homework. Oh, what do you need help in? Mm, differential equations. Differential equations. Well, come on over here and I'll help you out a little bit. Do you know the fundamental theorem of calculus? Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty good. Good, I'll get you later there, okay? Good. Yeah, so if you look here, right, and you look at the... Sorry about that interruption, uh, things happen. Anyways, I just wanted to say I really appreciate all your efforts, um, you know, in all these different learning environments that we're facing. Um, the other thing is, of course, uh, you know, each of our situations are different. You're taking on maybe different roles uh, than you're used to. Uh, maybe you're looking after siblings. Maybe you're responsible for cooking. Maybe you're, you know, doing work outside of the home. And, you know, those all, all those things are important. I mean, I've had to take on some different roles that I'm not usually used to. Oh, just a second there, sorry. Hey there. Hi, um, Dad. Um, Hi. I have trouble with my ballet. With your ballet? What are you having trouble with? I'm having trouble with my first position. First position, first position. Don't worry, I got this. Okay, so first position, right? The key thing is, is to have your feet out, okay? Your heels sort of together, and then just sort of bring your arms in like that. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, good luck with your ballet. Okay, any other questions you can ask me, okay? Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, like I said, you know, I've had to take on some different roles as well, and so I appreciate, you know, what might be going on at your house. Just do your best to get the work done, and let me know if you've got any issues, and I'll, I'll do my best to help you out. All right, good luck with week three, and we'll see you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to week three of learning how to do Arduino virtually. Um, just a couple little housekeeping things at the start. One of them was um, some of you haven't joined the class and it makes it a lot easier if you're in the class because then I can go and look at your code and look at your circuits uh, much easier. So remember from week one, Okay, and you can go look back at assignment from week one. One of the things that I asked you to do was to join Tinkercad. Okay, so there's a link there. There is a code for most of you. That will be the right code. There are a select few, and I think almost everybody on this group has uh, joined. You've got a different code because I could only put 50 in one class. And you've got a nickname that should you should enter. And if I did everybody correctly, it should be your first name and then your last initial. So Justin Trudeau would be Justin T, okay, and all lowercase there. So if you have trouble with that, let me know. It just makes it much easier for me to check, okay, um, you know, what you've done. And then some students I was able to just go, you know, into their account and look at their code. They didn't have to send me a link or anything like that. It just made life a little bit easier. So make sure you, you do that, okay? The other thing, um, some of you, do, 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 let's just go to this one here that we did last one last time um, some of you when you handed it in you sent me this link up here and when you see it saying edit all or whatever it is edit el that is your private link um, you have a copy you know you're, you've got a password protected it's in your account I can't see that so if you want me to share it and I would like you to share it with me there is a share button on the far right side okay you click share it says invite people then what you would do is you would copy this link here and so this link doesn't and you'll notice it doesn't say edit in it at all so you can just hit copy here um, and send that to me that's the ideal way of handing it in is just copy this to me I click on it it takes me right here I can just hand it in or just check it right so that's just the most efficient way so if you wouldn't mind doing that if you haven't done that already that works the best but also join the class because if there's an issue, I can just simply go in and take a look at it. All right, so last week we 
typed out a bunch of code and right and so we had this to set it up so we set up our 13 pins made them all well, not 13 pins but from uh, 5 to 13 made them all output so they were all activated um, and then we ran through this loop where it went 13 12 11 and so on as it went down this way and then back up Obviously, we could have started at five and you know gone up to thirteen and back down. Doesn't make a difference, um, right? In in this sense, um, one other thing was we didn't want to repeat five. So when you, you know we got to the bottom here, seven, six, five, then we just went back to six. And another little trick there too was that twelve. We sort of ended the bottom at twelve. We didn't go back to thirteen because it jumps back up, right? The loop, this main loop, jumps back up to 13, okay? So that was kind of the big idea. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed is that if you had, say, started the simulation, and especially when it was originally 1,000, right? One second for the delay on and off, it was kind of slow. I mean, it, Knight Rider, yeah, but very slow Knight Rider. So this, um, you know, if you wanted to speed this up, it was a bit of a pain. Well, you can, I mean, I'm going to show you a couple ways, but just to show you the easiest way with what the code we've got here, how we could fix this. If you remember from, you know, uh, Unity and or Python, one of the things, I'm going to stop the simulation here, one of the things that you can do is create a variable. And so just like in Unity and C Sharp, you have to declare what kind of variable it's going to be. Well, these numbers are integers, right? They're not decimal numbers. Um, and let's just call this the weight. And then you can set it to a value. So at the moment, you know, it's 500. Well, I could set it to 500 there. Okay. And I could go through, I'm just going to copy that. And wherever I've got 500, I can put that in. Now, the big difference here, of course, is that now instead of it being hard coded as 500, it's kind of dependent on whatever we've set weight to be. And hopefully you can see the improvement by doing this. If I went through each one and changed it to weight, which I will in a second, um, then I could just change it once to make it faster or slower. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to change all these to weight. So I'm going to pause it here. And through the magic of editing here, I have gone through and changed all these to weight. Okay, just copied and pasted it in. Now, at the moment, I hit start. Right, no, no different from before. Okay, it's still just sort of going in, you know, at 500. But the beauty of this is now I guess, oh, that's just too slow. Let me try 100. Okay, and then I put that in there, and then I can see it's very much quicker. Right, one change compared to making however many changes I had to make before. Okay, and say, oh, that was a little too fast. I mean, I can really fine tune it without having to do all that work. Okay, so beautiful, right? We've made our lives a lot better. Now, the other thing that we want to look at, though, um, is, you know, this is a lot of code. If I look down here, we are at about 200, or sorry, not 200, 100 lines of code, okay? Um, we can make this a lot more efficient. In fact, um, overall, I could get the same functionality for the whole thing. I could probably do this in about 15 lines of code in total, going from here and the loop, okay? Um, there's a little bit of a trick we can do. That will be a challenge for you. But I'm going to show you how to use something called a for loop. I'm going to get rid of everything except for that very top one, okay? So I'm going to take it back to here, okay? I'm going to start the simulation, and all it's doing is blinking that one light, okay? Stop it. What I'm going to do is use something called a for loop. Now we saw this a little bit in um, Python when we did the turtle drawing way back in September, uh, where we drew those patterns. Now a for loop. This has got a little bit of a different. We didn't see this particular um, um, sort of format here for doing this, but uh, you had the idea of loops. So this is just code that would run back and forth. So I'm going to put this in. And then I'll explain it. Okay, so just bear with me for a second here. And almost. And give me one more second. Okay, and I'm going to just change this to I. Okay, 
Perfect. Now, just I'll let it run. Okay, so you can see it doesn't do the full Knight Rider, it doesn't go all the way back, but it goes one way. Okay, so it goes from 13 to 5, lighting those up. So how did how did I do that? Well, it looks trickier than it really is. So first of all, this whole thing here is the for loop. Okay, so this says here for, okay, and then there's a sort of a, a, a set of, of three things that we'll talk about in a second. And then there's the curly brace, which leads it into sort of the main part of the code. And really, we didn't change much of the code, except we replaced that number with I, okay? Now, what's going on up here is that this is initializing a new variable called I. I could have given it any name. I could have called it X. I could have called it the LED. I could have called it anything I wanted to, okay? But I've just called it I because that's usually what we call sort of this iterator, this counter that's going through the, the loop. It's an integer, right? So the same as we saw up here, it's an integer. And we've initialized it. We've given it a value of 13. I could have given it any number. I chose 13 because I want it to start at 13. So the first value it's going to be is 13. OK? Second thing is a condition. So this condition here um, means that I can, uh, how could I could just say it easy, uh, it's going to run, it's going to work, this loop is going to go ahead as long as this is true. So as long as i is greater than or equal to 5, okay? And you can imagine right at the start, i was 13. So if 13 greater than or equal to 5, yes, that's true. So if this is true, right, if this says it's true, it will run this code. And wherever we see i, we put 13, because that's what we set i to. Now, once it gets to the bottom, OK, so it gets to this sort of delay here and gets to the curly brace, what it then does is it subtracts 1 from i. So i minus minus is meaning basically minus 1. Subtract, take 1 from i. So if i was 13, now i is 12. OK, so it comes back up. It skips this. It doesn't reinitialize i. i is now 12. Is 12 greater than or equal to 5? That is true. It puts 12 in here, runs through it, and then i becomes, you guessed it, 11, and then 10, and then 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. OK, so when it gets to 5, is 5 greater than or equal to 5? Yes. OK, so that's true. So it runs it with doing the 5. OK, so it turns 5 on, turns 5 off. Now it gets to is i. So it subtracts 1 from i, sorry. So i becomes 4. Now the question is, is 4 greater than or equal to 5? That's not true. So it skips this code and does whatever's next. Now in this particular case, next is nothing. So it goes back up to the top of the loop, and then it starts the for loop over again. And that's why i becomes 13 again. Okay. Just to show you, um, if I did put a different delay here, say, whoops, delay 2000, and I did this, so it's running through 12, and it gets to 5. OK, now it's off. It's down here. Then it does it again. OK, so that is the loop. OK, so this week, the challenge for you is going to be relatively short might take you a little bit of fixing or, or, you know, sort of playing around here to get it. But what I want you to do is to go backwards. So I'm going to put a little comment in here. So what I want you to do is reverse, right, uh, reverse the lights, like in Night Rider. Okay, so the idea is, and I'll give you a couple little hints, right? We're, we got to 5, we got to go from 6. 12. Okay? And so what you're going to basically do is this is all going to be the same. You need another one of these for loops, okay? But you're going to need to change your i value that it's going to start with, right? You're going to have to change the condition that it's going to be good to, and think about your greater than or think about your less than as well, and think about how you're going to get this instead of going down 
is going to go up. Okay? So it's very, very, very similar to this. In fact, I would start by maybe copying and pasting this. And really, all you're going to do is change these values here. Okay? So do do that and get that working. So really today's project or this week's project is going to look identical to last week's, okay, with it going up and down, but you're going to do it in a lot less code, okay? So that's your main goal. Now as an added bonus up here, okay, you can do this in a loop as well. This can be changed into a loop as well. So as a bonus, okay, and you don't have to do this, but you should be able to do this as well. Put this in a loop so that you only have one pin mode command, okay, but it activates all the pins, all right? So I won't say anything more about that, but it's very similar to this idea here, okay? So see if you can get it reduced, okay, so that basically you only have, you know, a loop with one line of code in it here, and then a little bit of code in there as well. And so I think by the end, you'll maybe have you know 20 lines of code, right? This would be probably reduced to about 20 lines of code or so to do that, everything that we did last week. Okay, so try that out, okay? Uh, next week, we'll look at functions. This might not take you too long. This might only be, you know, if you've watched the video and then uh, you know work on this, this might only take you half an hour this week. Um, but make sure, right, just to remind you, to join the class so I can see your work. And second of all, make sure that you share the link with me, not just copying this guy. Okay, so good luck with that. Oh, one last thing I'll just say. Um, if you ever want to change the name, <laughs> it gives you weird names, um, you can do it this way. Okay, uh, one other thing you can do is, just let me go back. If you want to make a different version of it, um, you can click on here, options, and you can duplicate, okay? So you can create a, uh, a copied version. So if you wanna mess around or do whatever, um, you don't have to ruin your copy because it automatically saves it. So it makes a copy of it. So when I go back to Tinkercad here, okay, now I've got that copy and I've got this one. And I could have changed the name when I was tinkering with it. All right. So again, let me know if you've got any problems or questions. I'll do my best to help out. Um, I'm usually around during the day. So make sure that you uh, uh, get in contact with me there. All right. Good. So good luck with this.